Hey everybody, welcome back to RPG Imaginings. Well, hot off the presses, recently released, we have Dungeon Crawl Classics number 100, a level 5 adventure by Harley Stroh. Um, I have a long uh, history of uh, interacting with Harley at cons. Um, he's GM'd me on at least three occasions, um, my buddy DJ and I and some of our friends. And uh, Harley Stroh is by far uh, one of my uh, favorite uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics authors. Uh, Michael Curtis being another one that shines for me. And uh, I've enjoyed Harley's creativity the whole time that that uh, he's GM'd me. And I love reading his products. Um, uh Sailors on the uh, Starless Sea is, I think, uh, one of the best funnels that's out there. Um, so what do we got going on in here? Um, you can see that my copy's a little warped, I'm sad to say. Um, but uh, that just gives it flavor. What's really cool about this, uh, and, you know, there may be spoilers in this video, FYI, um, <clears throat> in that... Um, this is a scenario uh, that is written around the idea of rotating puzzle rooms. Let's read about it. The God Eater sought to cast down the multiverse's deities by building a dungeon machine capable of distilling chaos into their god-slaying champion. Their plan failed, but their legacy remains. DCC number 100 is an adventure unlike any other. The dungeon spins on four separate axes that attach to the 17 by 22 inch game board. The dungeon's layout changes with each turn of a powerful in-game artifact. As the dungeon spins, the flame of chaos burn brighter and threaten the entire world. A handout booklet of stunning player-facing illustrations is also included. Can the heroes triumph, or will they succumb to the music of the spheres? Now, I am a sucker for a box set. That is probably the primary way in which I gel with the concept of an old school revival. I do not consider myself an OSR gamer uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but I definitely love me a great box set. I love DCC. DCC is by far my favorite out of all the olden style games that exist out there. And Harley is just a really creative dude. And I recently read an interview um, uh, in which he had mentioned that, uh, or, or maybe it was... Um, it was an advertisement for this particular box set. And Harley had said that it had been um, Goodman's, uh, Joseph Goodman's intention uh, since the DCC line was released to have a scenario that had, you know, like weird props associated with it. And I am all for it. I love weird props. That is part of the reason why I love Call of Cthulhu. Um, and so to see... Harley exercise his creativity on this one. I cannot wait to see what's going on. And so let's get the unboxing exacto and see if I can extract this without damaging it, which is always one of the goals, right? So I think our inroads is going to be down here, perhaps. I'm going to try to be careful. So wish me luck. Oh, I think I got it. I think I got it. I got it. And then, you know, Return of the Jedi, the blast doors close or the second set of doors closes. Uh, that's probably one of the actually better comedy moments in Star Wars, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, I definitely got it. So that's good. Uh, the other thing that's been happening on uh, marquee Dungeon Crawl Classics products, whether the Lankmar box set or this box set or... Um, Others that have been released uh, recently, or uh, the Dying Earth box set, which I guess is, you know, technically is or is not DCC. I think it might be using the Dungeon Crawl Classic system, but um, obviously it's it's dedicated towards a, a, a particular IP. But uh, this uh, sort of holographic symbols have been common features of the boxes on some of these more marquee pot, uh, products and uh, boxes are durable for these DCC products except for you what you saw with this one on the back but um, I don't fault DCC 
with that at all because um, a nice little bit of padding here to ensure that everything stays where it is. It didn't quite work for the back. I don't think that this is um, uh, the fault of Goodman Games at all. I think that it's just a matter of shipping. And so we have little laminated cardstock rotating rooms. Cool. And one that is grommeted in the center where it rotates. Okay, and then a larger one. Nifty. We have... Looks like some kind of symbol cards as to changes that are happening to the environment as things alter. So we're going to be either in goat or worm or wolf or lion. Nice. <clears throat> we have our player handouts booklet. I did mention that there could be spoilers here. Uh, these look spectacular. Um... I'm going to be on the lookout for a code for PDF so that these could be printed because I'm not, I, I mean, to be fair, you know, so long as you just let your players know that it's like, okay, um, you know, maybe I tape a piece of paper over particular handouts that they aren't to see yet. So you could still use this functionally, I think pretty easily because it is kind of a glossy uh, paper. And so you could use uh, scotch tape, um, or as they say across the pond, cello tape on this, and I don't think that it would damage it at all. Uh, what else do we have here? Hmm. We have some actual physical handouts to hand out to players. That's nice. Okay. We have the scenario booklet, which is a chunky 112 page endeavor. Okay, so, you know, whether this is an adventure or probably something that you play over several sessions, you know, is likely going to be the case. And then, this is where we're really getting, this is a literal game board. Okay, so um, I'll move the box bottom out of the way. It's, it's actually not warped all that much. Um, I think I might be able to bend that a little bit, but this is a literal game board that is laminated and uh, you can open up to make the map that you are exploring. Wow, and there are other parts of the dungeon on it as well and we can see that it is themed after the four uh, sort of animals that are determining the nature of the dungeon. Um, and so it'll be really interesting to dive into this and, and look to uh, see what playtime is on this because we have very rich materials here. The map isn't terribly complex throughout, you know, the history of uh, gaming, but, you know, that's certainly misleading here because if the map can change every time, you know, something is triggered, obviously that adds a lot of complexity and re replayability to the situation. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna set these other components down and then off camera here, uh, I'm gonna double check to see where my code is so that I don't display code on this code on the screen because I really want the PDF of this badly. Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't wanna spoil anything either, you know, too much, but just to give you like a little look at what's in uh, the book, you know, maybe we'll read paragraph one. Okay. Remember when fantasy role playing was new and unpredictable? When you didn't know what a monster might be able to do or how a wizard spell might manifest? That's something that I love about DCC, by the way, that there's variable magic manifestation. That time when inspiration came from classic sword and sorcery paperbacks, the Conan series, cheap comic books, and bet also a. <laughs> the Conan series and bad movies instead of the latest RPG source book. Those days are back. Dungeon crawl classics, RPG adventures return to those wild times when role-playing games were uncharted territory. And even the dice were strange. Each adventure is designed to be exciting and mysterious, challenging you with monsters you've never before seen and magic. You don't know if you can trust throw off the expectations of the ordinary and get ready for adventures. Undreamed of hitherto undreamed of Conan homage there. Uh, welcome to the, 
the music of the spheres is chaos, our most ambitious adventure to date. In the music of the spheres, the PCs discover a vast complex built for the purpose of mastering raw chaos by trapping it in physical form. This is done by distilling three elements, earth, fire, and water, and transmuting the admixture into flesh, soulless, and ripe for possession. Okay, so there's a little bit of our context for the scenario. And uh, here's a um, overall look at the map uh, as to what it should look like when it's assembled. Um, encounters, player start. This is a fifth level adventure. So this is intended to happen after you've funneled your characters down uh, into whoever survives. Another uh, hallmark of DCC. And it looks like we have, uh, this is really cool. In addition to overland travel and meeting at an inn, which of course is a typical um, uh, homage to uh, uh, AD&D, um, the expert set in which uh, fantasy role-playing expanded out beyond just the dungeon. But we also have design diaries here. So let's just read the first paragraph right here. The first iteration of Music of the Spheres was shared somewhere around Gen Con 2015. The core of the pitch was a central spinning map with four spinning submaps. It was a fun idea and not something other publishers had done, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, how Harley got to work on this project and how Goodman Games got to work on it. Okay, fantastic black and white artwork here. I love pencil and ink or pencil sketch work. It follows the usual, you know, DCC pattern, you know, in, in terms of overall layout, um, but it's clean. It looks great. And uh, yeah, so I'm not really sure. Oh, here we go. Okay. Nice. So further design di diaries as to how the map was developed. That's really cool. Chaos web webs erupt in the dark laboratory. This is going to be so much fun to read through, and I hope one day to run. Um, I already told people uh, that I was going to run Paranoia for uh, our little mini convention that we do over Labor Day weekend. Um, we call it a uh, uh, non-conventional game convention. Um, and there wouldn't be time you know, to run something this ambitious, but gosh, I am loving what I see and I am happy that I was able to share it with all of you. Uh, and so there it is. Dungeon Crawl Classics number 100 by Harley Stroh. The music of the spheres is chaos. Uh, I love unique takes on gaming. Uh, I love, uh, opportunities to, uh, solve puzzles and uh, contend with variation that one does not expect. Um, and Music of the Spheres is Chaos looks like an awesome addition to the hobby, I would say. Um, and it's true that there have not been. Um, you know what? Is there something in here? Oh, you know what I bet is in here? Um, attachment grommets. I bet you're in here. So this is not just packing. This is also where uh, where you have your attachment grommets in there for uh, the stuff right here. So that's that's a cool addition. Um, you get all the kit that you need in order to be successful. Um, but yeah, I am excited to read this. I'm excited to someday play it. And uh, if, like me, you love Dungeon Crawl Classics, uh, check out all of Harley Stroh's catalog. Uh, he's one of my favorite designers. He's a great writer. Uh, incredibly creative. Um, he's a great GM. And uh, the music of the Spheres is Chaos is... Uh, the music of the Spheres of Chaos, I think, is a fitting number 100 for Dungeon Crawl Classics. So well done, Goodman Games. And I'm excited to show this off to everybody. Have a great one. Bye-bye.